Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. In the past, we've used numerical payoffs to solve our games, but in the future we want to solve the general forms of games that have exogenous constants for their payoffs. For example, I've taught you how to solve a game that looks like this, but if I turn the prisoner's dilemma into its general form, which looks like this, you really wouldn't know what to do here. In upcoming videos, I'll teach you how to solve these exogenous forms of the games, but before we can do that, we first need to learn some very basic probability rules. There are two of them, and we'll derive the rest just from these two. First, in a probability distribution with n events, if that probability distribution is valid, then the probability that event a or b or c or d, etc., all the way to n, equals the probability of a occurring individually plus the probability of b occurring individually, etc. And all of those added together must equal 1, which is the same thing as saying that they must add up to 100%. And the other one's a little bit more straightforward. It's that for any individual event, whether it's A, B, C, regardless of the, the name of it, the probability of that event happening must be no less than zero and no greater than one. So what does all this mean? Well, for starters, the first rule implies that something must happen. Suppose the probability the world comes to an end in 2012 is 0.01. And you can see a little bit more formal notation of that on the screen. This isn't a valid probability distribution by itself. We only know what happens 1% of the time, and in order for this to be a valid probability distribution, we must define what's going to happen the other 99% of the time. So what else could happen? Well, the world could not come to an end. And you might be wondering how we're going to calculate that, and it's actually very straightforward. You just have this equation from earlier that says that everything must add up to 1, and we have two events that could possibly happen. We have the world ends and the world doesn't end. So we plug in some numbers. We have 0.01 plus the probability the world doesn't end equals 1, and we can solve for our unknown the probability the world doesn't end, and we get 0.99. And we can actually generalize our findings like this. This is going to give us rule number 3. If we know the probability of everything happening except for one event, in this case I've represented it as the probability of event A occurring, then we can actually solve for that probability using the knowledge that everything must add up to 1. So the probability of the unknown probability of event A equals 1 minus the, all the rest of the probabilities added together. So let's try an example with this just to make sure it's a little bit more clear. Say I gave you an unfair six-sided die. The probability you roll a 1, 2, or 3 is 25%. It's 1 fourth a piece. And the probability that you roll a 4 or 5 is 1 16th a piece. I'm asking you, what is the probability you roll a 6? Well, we don't know the probability of roll of 6, but we know the probability of everything else happening, so we should be able to solve for that. So it's going to be 1 minus the probability of everything else added together. And there's a little bit of that math on your screen right there, and I did all the work already. And if you add up 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 sixteenth, you get 7 eighths. So 1 minus 7 eighths equals 1 eighth, and that's the probability that you will roll a 6 using this unfair die. Alright, two more things. These are both derived from the fact that a probability must be between 0 and 1, inclusive, inclusive of 0 and 1. That means it can equal 0, it can equal 1. But that means that you can't have a probability that's a negative probability, and you can't have a probability that's greater than 1. Now you might be wondering why I'm actually putting these things out here. It seems like that's very obvious, but actually it's these two things that are going to be what allows us to show that things are invalid. For example, if you ever calculated a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, which has to be a valid probability distribution by definition, and that equilibrium violates one of these rules, say you solve for it and you get a negative number, then that mixed strategy Nash equilibrium actually isn't an equilibrium at all. You can get rid of that mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and only look for pure strategy Nash equilibria. So next time, we'll start actually using these rules and utilize them for the general forms of the games that we've been learning.